Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com as we conclude our study titled Pre-Trib Rapture Escapism. This is part two of two. Repeatedly, the Lord makes it clear we go up when things start to go bad. Start to go bad. Look over again, we're back in Luke 21 where we started. Luke 21, 25. Through 28. And uh, we've heard this, these passages many times, most of us. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. See, if you read these passages, you'll, you'll know better than to ever buy anything talking about blood moons. Yeah. Right. The moon signs are after the rapture. The only thing moon signs before the rapture is P.T. Barnum, a sucker born every minute. That's all it is, hawking books, videos, whatever. That's why it's important to study these things, to understand the proper place for these things. Verse 26, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then verse 27, and then... Shall they see the Son of Man coming in a clown with power and great glory, as I referenced before, that this is during the tribulation period. And then he stops. He's no longer talking about the tribulation period in verse 28. Read verse 28 with me. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Now, Anybody who takes their time and reads that carefully can see. He's been telling you everything leading up to verse 27, which is the second coming. Verse 28, change. And he says, and when these things begin to come to pass. So now he's taking you back to the beginning. And when they begin to come to pass, look up. I believe we're there. The one world order. Setting the stage, it's there. The apostasy, the great falling away, it's there. As it was in the days of Noah, we're there. As it was in the days of Lot, we're there. Line after line after line, you bullet point all the things that are going to happen at the beginning of the 70th week of Daniel. It's all set up. This stage is set. And we want to escape it. Amen? Amen. <laughs> we escape as these things begin and the 69th week of Daniel's prophecy then comes to an end 69th week comes to an end at the time of the rapture now here's where there's some gray area everybody likes everything to be perfect lined up and it, it just can't be the Bible doesn't line everything up perfectly all the time one of the things we don't know the Bible doesn't say that the 69th week uh, when the 69th, I'm, I'm getting my words crossed, the 69th week ended at the time of Christ. And so since, that's why I said at the ascension of Christ, he could have raptured us believers that were on the earth and started the 70th week at any moment. We've been right there on the edge in a, just in a theological sense ever since the ascension of Jesus Christ. But... It's like I said, it's becoming even more clear <laughs> as time has gone on. And uh, that's why verse 28 says, And when these things begin to come to pass, I want you to get that planted in your mind to remember it's when these things begin to come to pass that uh, we know that our redemption draweth nigh. Well, as I said, look at what's going on. There should be an excitement, but there's not among most Christians I know. There should be excitement, but today's church is layered to sin. It's lukewarm. It's all about me. It's, it's, it's all about making, you know, you're, I said the best life now, purpose driven, this and that. It's all about you. Turn on, uh, you know, the TV preachers on TBN or the Inspiration Network or Daystar or any of those networks. I channel flip through there once in a while, and it's always about you. They say very little about Jesus, and when they do, they're misrepresenting most of the time. It's 
We are not looking up. We're not looking for Jesus. It's not about Jesus. It's become a self-cult. Self-love, self-esteem cult. Me, 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 me. Yeah. And one of the interesting things about watching some of the older programs, I mean, older, I mean like the 1970s and 80s, we were watching The Waltons, and it was a 1975 episode. And John Boy blurts out about how it's, you know, going to be good for somebody's self-esteem that they are able to get a job or something like that. Already at that time, they were preaching that nonsense. Self-esteem. What you never hear on these programs is what you're supposed to do is esteem Christ. And everything you do, if it's worth anything, should glorify Christ. And where do you, you don't esteem yourself, you esteem, you esteem Christ, who if you're saved is in you. It's not greater is me, it's greater is he that is in me. It's all about Jesus, not self. But you can't, you can't, these days I get it all the time, people emailing me and telling, well, yeah, but, but, goat's butt. It's the Bible is clear on the matter, but we've had all of our curriculum and the, you know the focus on the family stuff within the church I grew up in, and everybody got brain mushed with all this stuff, and they just can't let go of it. And it's just that's part of I believe the stage being set is that churches that don't focus on the person and focus on the Word and Jesus, this is the kind of crowd they get. You aren't going to pack the house and you're not going to have to build bigger buildings when you won't talk about you. You, you, you. And that's where we're at. And I want to mention this. The day of the Lord begins immediately after the rapture. Now, uh, the 69th week ended. We're in that parenthesis. And when the rapture happens, that the rapture is really the first judgment of God on the world. Now the tribulation countdown and the 70th week countdown doesn't begin then. There's an amount of time between the rapture and the beginning of the 70th week. It begins, Daniel 9, 24 to 27 explains, it begins when they confirm the covenant between the Antichrist world government and Israel. That's when the countdown begins. But between the rapture and that confirmation of the covenant, we don't know how long. There's a lot of discussion about how long that will be. We don't know. But the judgment of God on this earth begins at the rapture. Uh, Sunday, some of you were here and saw where I talked about the atheists. are talking about, like in England, Richard Dawkins and these guys, they're talking about how now that Christianity's dying out, they're scared. They're atheists. And they're admitting that as the church dies... This is getting ugly. Maybe, maybe we were better off with religion, they say, and with people afraid of there being a God judging them. Now shoplifters don't fear God seeing them. Murderers kill and dispose of the body thinking they'll get by with it because they don't think God sees them. And they're rejecting God's law and order. Like the, yeah. They're rejecting all that. Without God, you do reject His law. And, well... These people who have been working, some of them like Richard Dawkins, Sam Harrison, them, they've been kind of backsliding as atheists because <laughs> they're saying, well, maybe we need... But I'll tell you, there's still a lot of people who really have convinced themselves we'd be better off without Christ, the God of the Bible, the Bible, Christians, the church. They'll get it. And that's the first judgment of God is the rapture. And you'll have a world without a church, without gospel ministry without the law being respected and believed because as we also said the law is for the ungodly the godless um, if you, as Christians the law shows us our need of salvation we're saved now we're to live by the spirit but the unsaved world needs the law but they're going to throw it out after the rapture the Bible says there's something wrong with people who want to face the day of the Lord these people who reject the rapture and are like, I'm building a bunker. And I've got enough food to last me 10 years. And I've got enough ammo to take on, the, you know, the, 
the military. Uh, there's something wrong with people who think that way. Yeah. Ignorance is one of their big problems. And let's look over at Amos 8. Amos 5, 18 to 20. Amos is, uh, find Joel, and then you find Amos. Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos. He's in, Amos lives in the same neighborhood as Daniel. 18. Water break. <coughs> All right, let me get myself there. Amos 5, verse 18 through 20. But read verse 18 and stop. I just want to read that. Read that with me. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Now, one of the things these heretics do is go even more heretical and deny that the tribulation period or Daniel 70th week is the day of the Lord. And I love, there's a few guys I love them, and, you know, I don't try to, I don't hold any disrespect or anything, but they'll try to nail it down and say the day of the Lord is actually a 24 hour period at the, right before Jesus returns. And um, there's all kinds of scriptures that talk about what's going on throughout the 70th week. Uh, the day of the Lord, if you look at it, encompasses everything after the rapture to the great white throne. As I said, the rapture is the first judgment of God on the godless world. And the day of the Lord is a time of judgment where God pours out His wrath in the seals, trumpets, and vials, returns and destroys the Antichrist system, casts the Antichrist and the false prophet into uh, the lake of fire, casts Satan into a bottomless pit. But even during the millennium, it's a judgment. There's a judge on the earth. King Jesus is judge, and he will judge the entire 1,000 years. And he'll, people, sin won't be tolerated. I mean, it'll be a firm dictatorship. The thing is, is, it won't be an ugly dictatorship like we've seen on the earth where dictators abuse people and take all the goods and everybody else lives like a, you know, in poverty. Everybody will be prosperous during the millennium. King Jesus will be judge. And the judgment doesn't stop, of the, the day of the Lord doesn't stop until that last battle at the end of the millennium. And God, uh, Jesus will destroy all the enemies and then commence the great white throne. And that great white throne is the uh, end of the day of the Lord. And then we enter eternity. So verse 19 and 20, it says, this, verse 19 says, is, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him. <laughs> There's a little humor here. <laughs> uh, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Thought he could rest and lean against the wall and then he's dead. Verse three, read verse 20 with me. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? even very dark and no brightness in it. So these people who think, oh, I'm going to go through the tribulation period. God says, woe unto you. To what end is it for you? So in closing, I might read another verse or two, but I want to say something about what's behind today's anti-pre-trib rapture movement. I've just given this some thought. Number one, a lot of these are unsaved teachers. Uh, the cults all deny the rapture, for example. And then a lot of these guys are just, they're, they're unsaved. Uh, I got a book by a lady uh, against the rapture. I haven't read it. I picked it up for a couple of bucks and thought, well, my, maybe I'll get around to reading it sometime. And I started, I looked through it and it's gobbledygook. It's not even a good uh, attempt at refuting the rapture. But the point is that the woman's an apostate. She doesn't believe the Bible. She's not born again. And that's what a lot of the anti-pre-trib rapture movement is. It's unsaved teachers. And then there's the doomsday cults. They're called that because they're teaching people we're getting ready to go through the doom. <laughs> and they get everybody... All, it's, you remember the Waco cult, David Koresh, Heaven's Gate, even Jim Jones? Those are all doomsday cults. 
and they reject the rapture, and most of them are run by unsaved teachers as well. Sometimes it's just spiritual immaturity. There are a few people who came uh, from the spiritually immature point of rejecting the rapture, but then as they listen to our studies, and I, I recommend other teachers, and they listen to them as well, they've come back and said, you know what? I've been really reading and studying over the last year or two, and I've come to the conclusion that the rapture is imminent. And they've, and they've said, I believe in the dispensations and that sort of thing. That's why we're here. That's why we put our messages out there. I believe there are people who want to learn. But there are some who are just immature and they, they think they're mature or they just don't have any interest in growing. As I said, most of the visitors who come here once or twice and leave and never come back, it's because they're not interested in learning the Bible. They want to go to a church where there's programs, entertainment, you know, you name it. But it's not about learning the Bible. Then uh, just stubbornness. Some people have been re haven't learned the Bible and they've been rejecting the pre-trib rapture for years. They've made sure everybody who knows them knows they reject the rapture and they're invested. Now if they were to change, they'd have to eat so much crow that they just can't stand the thought. Stiff-necked is what the Bible calls that. Stubborn. Then uh, pride and arrogance. Just... Some of these people, when they contact me, they're just like, yeah, it's just amazing. Someone who seems as intelligent as you do believes in the rapture. Just amazing that you would think that such a thing would... You know, and they're proud and arrogant. Uh, and uh, a lot of times they're the same people who just can't deal with a lot of miraculous things in the Bible. And then finally, they're anti-dispensational. Some people have bought the lies that dispensationalism was started by a Jesuit priest or, or uh, the pre-trib rapture was conjured up by Margaret MacDonald. And the fact is that the, the, the Jesuit priest they were referring to and the Margaret MacDonald 15-year-old girl didn't even believe in the pre-trib rapture. And we've got it on our website where we actually let you go and read what they wrote. Margaret MacDonald believed in the pre-second coming rapture. In other words, the, basically a post-trib rapture. She believed that right before Jesus returned to conquer, he would rapture everybody and get the Christians out before he came to conquer. That's not a pre-trib rapture. That's pre-wrath or post-trib. And so we're, a lot of the anti-dispensational people, they falsely accuse you. They don't even know what they're talking about. Regardless, you must be saved if you want to escape. Uh, Hebrews 2.3 asks the question, the uh, epistle of Paul to the Hebrews, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? The question is, you won't escape. And uh, you won't escape hell if you die having neglected so great salvation. And you won't escape the 70th week of Daniel if you neglect uh, so great salvation and miss the rapture. And I am an escapist. But am I an escapist for wanting to escape hell too? I want to escape hell. Do you? Amen. Does that make us an escapist? Oh well. Make me a t-shirt. <laughs> It's like being called an escapist is not an insult. It's a compliment. It just means you understand your Bible. Amen. I want to escape hell. And I want to escape hell on earth, which is what the 70th week of Daniel will be. So if they reject Jesus, you will not escape. That's the bottom line. You will not escape. I said I was going to read one more, and I'm going to. Hebrews 12. You don't have to turn there if you don't want to. I'm going to read it. Hebrews 12, 23 to 25. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. Isn't that wonderful? And to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Verse 25, see that ye refuse not 
him that speaketh. For if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. I'm ready to escape. Instrumentalists, we're going to close with a song. We don't always do that. I want to this time. And while they're coming, does anybody have a question or comment? Yeah, Kim? Uh, I mean, be honest, my answer is no. There's no difference. There are people who make a difference. But um, I believe that the day of the Lord and the day of Christ are the same. If you compare notes, they're the same. And if, uh, if Christ is Lord, and He is, then the day of Christ is the day of the Lord. And sometimes it's just called that day. It's not even called Day of Christ or Day of the Lord. And so I've, ran the, I've run the references, and again, some of the people who make the difference, I don't see the difference after I've listened to them make the case. And so uh, I believe that the Day of Christ and the Day of the Lord, it's a very good question, and you'd be, you'd be probably surprised how much debate there is on it, though, out there. It's a question a lot of people ask. 25, if you're not there already. Now, who, Johnny, do you have a question? So I was, it reminded me of things like Noah. Like, um, because Noah was willing to believe, he saved everyone. I mean, if Noah hadn't been saved, he would have just destroyed everyone. On the yeah, earth. yeah. And I think you see the same idea with Abraham and Lot. Yeah. As God said, you know, there's a certain number of righteous people, I will, you know, I won't destroy it. And so I think it's the same idea about you know, once we're God's taking us out, so we can now. Yeah. Amen. Isaiah talks about how people don't know that the righteous are taken out of this world. How's it? Isaiah fifty-seven one. Yeah. Re- righteous man perishes, but no man layeth it to heart. Did you hear that? Say it again. You know that too. The righteous perish. The righteous man perishes, but no man layeth it to heart. None, I, I can't want to misquote. None considering that he's taken away from the evil to come. Yeah. They don't consider that God's taken them away from evil to come. Yeah. But you know, that's the thing about as it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Lot, eight people, three people. <laughs> you talk about a very... Now, it, it may be... You, I heard somebody say about Lot. Well, it's three out of a city of maybe a hundred thousand. So in a world of seven and a half billion, if you took that same ratio, it'd be a lot more people. Well, but in Noah's case, <laughs> there could have been billions of people on the earth by then. Yeah. And uh, what's his name uh, at the ICR? Henry Morris has a chapter on that in one, in one of his books, where he talks about how it's possible that there were. Tens of billions of people on the planet, which would explain why we have so much oil and coal. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what his, he makes the case in that chapter. I, have to, I can't remember which book it's in. But uh, the, what's that? Oh, I'm sorry. And try to calculate if every, if every bit of it. I think he does happen. that. Well, I think he he says, you know, hypothetically, if we knew for sure this, you know, here's how the math. I'll have to try to find it. I know I have the book. Yes, you. So two unleaded questions. First one, is it once saved, always saved? Or like Romans eleven twenty two, once saved, stay saved? I don't see the difference. You Once you're saved, you're saved. Once you're saved, you stay saved. Uh, people have a, a, a hang-up on how to say it, and I don't debate it. The main thing is that you understand that once you're saved, it's done. 
Once, once you're saved, it's a done deal. You can't lose your salvation and be born again again. <laughs> you know, and that's how, see how dumb it just sounds dumb. And, uh, but whether you want to say it's once in grace, always in grace. Or uh, how, what are some of the other ways? People, people have different ways of referring to eternal security. Um, that's another phrase, eternal security. Um, but, you know, you can pick, pick your favorite way of referring to it as long as you get the doctrine right and you have the assurance of salvation. And you don't, if you don't preach eternal security, you're preaching some form of works for salvation. Because if you have to work to stay saved, then you're working for your salvation. And for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And last question. Um, from Mary and Omar. Let's see. He says, I have a question. I believe in the seven-year wedding of the Lamb. Is the wedding of the Lamb some kind of ceremony for us that determines the kingdoms we get during the millennium? Uh, the, the marriage isn't, uh, doesn't have anything to do with that. The, the, the rewards which is what you're referring to, are decided at the judgment seat of Christ. And uh, the judgment, I believe, from what I understand, we've taught on this before, where the judgment seat of Christ is separate from the marriage supper. And uh, there are two different things, and the marriage supper is a celebration. And the rewards and announcement about where you will serve in the millennium what your job will be, Janice said, as she, she thinks you'll mind me saying this, if you're out there, Janice, she said, so we're going to do, have jobs in heaven. You mean like scrubbing toilets? I said, well, in heaven, there won't be any poop. I know Jenny loves when we talk about these things. So there's no toilets. So there's no scrubbing toilets. But I'll guarantee you, you'll love your job, Amen. Well, no matter what it is. And uh, <laughs> no. And also, your body will be will be corrupt and dying as it is now. So you won't so whatever the job is, you're not going to get tired. Yeah, like today, I was bent over and oh, I pulled something just below my shoulder blade and had her pushing on it and then put heat on it for about an hour. Now I feel fine. But in after the rapture, I'll never do that again. <laughs> All right, let's sing. If you want to stand, you can.